Now, our very first keynote presentation for today at the Crypto Expo Asia, it is titled Enterprise Adoption of Blockchain via Low-Code Interoperable Networks. Now, exactly what will this talk cover? Now, it will be talking more about how to design and launch trusted networks with decentralized data ownership as well as strict privacy as well as intelligent automation. All of these are difficulties met along the way. In order to deliver some real-world utility and value in healthcare and beyond. So to shed more light on this topic, we have Pradeep Goel, founder and CEO of Softcare. Let's put our hands together to welcome Pradeep. A big hand, everybody. We all are here to talk about crypto but I want to talk about something a little bit different. I want to talk about our children and what kind of world are we leaving for them. So I want you to think about something. You've been here for a couple of hours and you'll be here till about 5 p.m. How much do you think healthcare would spend before you sit down for dinner? Or let's make it simpler. I'm going to talk to you for 20 minutes. How much do you think we'll spend on healthcare worldwide in the next 20 minutes? Any takers? Any guests? The next 20 minutes will cost $300 million. By the time you sit down for dinner, healthcare would have spent $7.2 billion tonight. And that happens every second. Healthcare worldwide costs $15 million a minute. Whether you're walking, sleeping, healthy or not, $15 million a minute. So if you think about it, we can talk all day long about finance, staking, DeFi, but the real burn that we as a society do is healthcare. $8 trillion a year. If you divide that by the number of seconds, you will figure out how much money we spend. Each second is staggering. Now, what are we here to discuss? Blockchain has many use cases. You got DeFi, you got staking, you got crypto assets, you got many other use cases, but one of the biggest use cases of healthcare, uh, of blockchain, is healthcare. And yet nobody in healthcare is using it. Do you know of any project in the world that is successfully deployed in healthcare? Any protocol, Cardano, Solana, Polygon, any? No. So here we are spending $7 billion before you sit down for dinner, and yet we can figure out how to use blockchain in healthcare. What's wrong with that? It's the single largest sector of global economy where there is no blockchain at all. So you have to ask the question, what's going on? We have been in health, blockchain has been around now for almost a decade. There is not a CIO in the world who doesn't know about blockchain, but yet they don't use it. There's three fundamental reasons why blockchain is not being utilized. One, is it's very hard to use for a consumer. Try giving blockchain to your grandma while she's sick and saying, here, grandma, use the blockchain to make an appointment. Good luck. That's not going to happen. Try getting consent and data management done by blockchain, where everything is meant to be copied and replicated all day long, and meeting HIPAA or GDPR requirements, good luck with that. Right? And the third is try building a solution on blockchain for healthcare and getting it through all the regulatory and compliance issues, and the cost is staggering, hundreds of millions of dollars. So good luck with that. So this is why there is no blockchain users in healthcare today. But that needs to change. Because we can leave our world where by the time I finish speaking, we would have blown through $300 million, out of which 150 million are wasted. So we're gonna leave our kids a world where neither healthcare works nor they will be able to afford it. And yet we keep talking about the promise of blockchain to change the world. So maybe we should do something about really changing the world. Now, I've been a CIO in healthcare insurance companies. I've worked for governments in many countries. I've spent 30 plus years in healthcare. And what I've learned over the years is that healthcare has three fundamental issues. And blockchain is really, really good at solving them if properly applied. The first problem in healthcare that we need to fix is identity, consent, transaction, management of healthcare entities. There's an entity called patient, all of you, your kids, your mom, your dad, me, my kids. 
There's an entity called doctor. There's an entity called pharmacist, radiologist, specialist, hospital, lab. These are all healthcare entities and they all have certain role to play in your life. They are not just nodes on the chain. They are actually entities with a certain function in society. And those functions are, con convert, con are managed by government. So you need to have the ability to manage these entities on blockchain. You also need to give consent between these parties. So a chain that allows these consents and relationships to be managed is fundamentally what's needed in healthcare. The second thing we need is data security. I'm not sure about you, but I definitely don't want my medical records on Facebook. If you are any kind of a public entity or a patient with any illness, you don't want fake doctors treating you. And you certainly don't want your data being sold without your permission. So all that data consent and privacy is difficult to do when you replicate the data everywhere. That's what blockchain does. So why do we use blockchain for healthcare at all? Well, because you need to connect all the parties to share the data. You don't need to put the data on the chain to control the data with the chain. Okay? That's the second part the blockchain is good for. And the third part is regulation. You've all heard about regulation. You've all heard that your government is trying to pass laws to protect you. In the US, we have something called HIPAA. In, in Europe, we have something called GDPR. Here in Singapore, we have something called Patient Privacy and Protection Act. Every country in the world is passing laws to protect you from your data being used against you, right? That's normal fundamental value of regulation. And blockchain is a really good use case for implementing better regulation. So now, how does this all come together? Imagine a blockchain where you can have a node that has an identity, that has a role, and your role and your identity allows other nodes to talk to you in the right way. So if I have a patient node, doctors can send me prescriptions, pharmacies can actually ship the prescription to my home based on the node data that is available to them, and I have full control over this node, so my medical records, my digital assets, my identity, my patient uh, profile, my health risk assessment, my past history, everything is in the node and I give access to that. And remember, blockchain is what? It's cryptology, right? It's basically encryption-based ledger. So what if I could control my node and give you keys to read part of the node that could give you access to information that you need to have for as long as you need to have? If I'm your patient for a month, you have access to my node for a month. When you're no longer my doctor, good luck and goodbye. You don't need access to my node. So the concept of blockchain as a decentralized ledger married with granular control of data, identity, consent, and need is a really good use case of blockchain. Okay? The other big problem in healthcare is payments. Have you ever, any of you have insurance? Healthcare insurance? Okay. When you go to the doctor, you pay part of the bill. Then you wait for insurance company to pay the other part. Then you get a bill from the insurance company to pay the third part. Ever had that happen to you? It's called copay, billing, adjudication, reconciliation, and payment collection. Just simple visit to the doctor that might cost $70, can sometimes cost $100 to get the payment. Imagine going to a store in the mall, buying a purse, and then the cost of paying for the purse to Visa would be more than the purse itself. How would you like to buy a $2,000 purse and pay $3,000 to pay for the purse? That's healthcare. Sometimes we charge more to make the payment than the doctor spends to give you the care. Not very unusual. So blockchain is a really good use case for that as well. It can, use, it can be used to program money that moves in real time. So again, I said to you, by the time I finish speaking, healthcare would have spent $300 million worldwide. 150 million would be wasted. 150 million will go towards doctors and pharmacies. By the time you sit down for dinner, 7 billion would have been spent. 3 billion would have been wasted. Think about that. Every single day, for the few hours that we are not, when we are not sleeping, healthcare burns through roughly, if you divide 7 trillion by 350, 365 days, you can do the math, about 200 billion a day. Pretty staggering numbers. So what we have done at SolveCare is work with different healthcare institutions, 
with physicians, with nurses, with labs, with pharmacies, and designed a solution that they can actually use in the hospital, in the lab, in the pharmacy. And what I'm here to talk about is how does that actually work. So I'm going to show you something. And I want you to take a look at how actually blockchain is utilized in healthcare. We have built a wallet that manages your digital assets, your healthcare assets, your identity assets, and your payment assets. So you have different identities as a patient. You can link those identities to different nodes in the chain. So I can be a doctor one day and a patient the next day and a pharmacist the next day and a parent the next day. And based on my role, the same wallet behaves differently. And it allows me to connect to every one of you if you have the, the wallet on the other side. So now, as a patient, I can transact with the doctor. What, that, what happens behind the scenes is every single transaction gets written to the ledger on the chain. But what also happens is every record gets encrypted and the key is only within me and the doctor. And if I want to take the key away from the doctor, I can do that, in which case they can no longer see my records. But this allows me to connect from sitting in Singapore to a doctor anywhere in the world, as long as they're willing to do a handshake between my wallet. So it does not stop me as a parent to reach out to a doctor, not in Florida, where my kids live, but in Singapore. And if the doctor is willing to do a handshake with me by exchanging two care cards, then we have a relationship. And I can give the doctor consent, share my kids' records, get prescriptions, send a payment. Why do we need government to sit in between us and tell us we can't do that? Why? Well, because you may hurt yourself. So the chain then goes on and enforces that the other side is a proven doctor. In every country, for the doctor to join the chain, they have to verify they are really a doctor. So they can submit their credentials, have the peers review it, and then now they have a doctor role. So when you search for a doctor, you, only know, that doctor, you know that only doctors are replying to your query. So the idea is to create an open chain that anyone can join as a patient, as a doctor, as a pharmacist, as a lab, as an ambulance driver, as a medvac helicopter pilot, as a you know, nutritionist, as the acupuncturist, as somebody who just writes cool books on how to sleep properly. It doesn't matter. As long as you have certain credentials, you can join the chain and you can service. So the, all of this gets done. Now, before we go further, how can one company solve the global healthcare issue? Singapore is different. Senegal is different. Uh, correct. Every single country has its own roles and its own relationships. But what we are really trying to do is to enable two parties to talk to each other. The vision is healthcare should come to you no matter where you are, immediately when you need it. Some people ask me, what's the vision? What are you going to do with all this blockchain, AI, machine learning, digital mobile computing, what's the future of healthcare? And my answer is one thing, healthcare in the hands of the patient. The future of healthcare is very simple. Wherever you are, whenever you need care, you should get it right where you are. Put the hospital in your hand on your phone, which means you have access to the right doctor, the right care, the right protocol, the right prescription immediately. 90% of healthcare will move out of the hospital and into your hand. Yes, we still need to go to the hospital and get surgery, but barring surgery, healthcare should be where you are. If you're on a cruise ship or on a hiking the Mount Everest or you're sitting at home on your sofa, healthcare should come to you. And that's the promise of blockchain and AI and machine learning. So to achieve that, we have created this concept of an open healthcare fabric, an open platform that everybody who has a role in healthcare, either as a consumer, but as a provider, as an administrator, as a facilitator, as a regulator, or as somebody who just loves healthcare and wants to tinker with it, anybody who has a role can join the chain, download the wallet, connect to the chain with the right role, and do your job. So, the way you do that, country by country, is we have built a product called Care Labs. So, if you get certified on Care Labs, you can go build a healthcare solution for your country for your city, for your hospital, for your family, for your practice, for your, for your group of friends. The notion is that Care Labs is your private, lets you design your own private care network. And you invite people that you want into it. So if I'm a doctor and I have a practice outside and I have 2,000 patients, I can build a care network, invite all my patients, and deliver better care to them. 
And I don't care if they're in Singapore right now, they're traveling to, to Malaysia, it doesn't matter because I'm connected with them through my own private care network. But that care network can interact with every other care network anybody has ever built, which means there is no more silos. I'm automatically interconnected to the world of healthcare. Okay? So you can build journeys in the lab. So here is a journey of an insurance company designing a network to let you enroll for health insurance. Here is a journey for a doctor issuing their own appointment and referral journey. Okay? Now, why does this all, any of this matter? It matters because healthcare is the largest industry in the world. It's the largest single piece of economy in any country, and globally it's $8 trillion a year and growing fast. Why? Because people are getting older and there's simply more people. We just crossed 7 billion people on the planet and that trend's gonna keep going. So healthcare will continue to dominate, but it's also the single biggest sector where there is zero blockchain. So for those of you who are interested in looking at the future of blockchain beyond the current issues we have with regulation and finance and all the things that we are, we've been doing for the last five years, and you want to look ahead, then look ahead at where the real use cases are coming. And outside of finance, the much larger use case, almost three times bigger than finance, is healthcare. So I challenge all of you to think about what role you can play. You might say, well, healthcare doesn't affect me. I'm young, I'm healthy. But you have parents. You might say, I'm a really healthy, fitness-oriented guy, but you have kids. Every single one of you was born in healthcare. Every single one of you will need healthcare at the end of life and in between. So you have a role to play. And the role you can play is to learn to build solutions on chain that others can benefit from. So we invite you to read more about SolveCare, but more importantly, learn how to build networks. I'll tell you a small story and then I'll finish. We were working with one of the top universities. We are working with one of the top universities in the US. They are a global brand and they have a big university hospital where they do cancer research. So we went to them and we shared with them our platform and this very, very senior oncologist said to me, I don't get technology. I don't do technology. I still use paper and pencil. I have no time for this newfangled stuff that you call mobile computing and all that. We showed them how you can design a care network on paper. We, we did a workshop with him for two hours. Three days later, he was authoring his own care network to actually collaborate with his patients because he understood suddenly that he can be a much better doctor, even though he's been practicing for 50 years now, if he uses technologies like blockchain and what SolveCare had to offer. So every single human being on the planet will ultimately either consume or offer services of healthcare through a platform similar to what we are building and what we have built. And you will be a user, trust me because your parents are gonna ask you to take help coordinate their care, your kids are gonna get sick one day and they're gonna, you're gonna need better care, and all of that is moving to the chain. You just don't see it yet, because we are all focused on a very easy use case of blockchain, which is finance, but the real value proposition, the real impact on humanity, far greater than finance, is waiting in healthcare. And you have a role to play. So I invite you to come out, talk to us, reach out to us online, and we will help you dream up the next big healthcare revolution, and we want you to be at the vanguard of it. Again, remember, this speech just cost you all $300 million. The next speech will cost you $500 million. That's your money, your taxes, that are going to fund that madness. It's about time we did something about it. Thank you, everyone.